Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis, and we're in Chapter 3 part of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. So let's jump to today's topic, which is multivariate parameters and statistics. Now, a parameter, of course, is a characteristic about the population. A statistic is a characteristic about the sample. So if we look at the population mean vector, which is the expected value of y, now, we don't always put the dimensions under it, but that's just to illustrate that it's a, a vector of length p, which is y, composed of y1, y2, to yp. Expected value goes into each component, and the expected value of our first variable is the mean of that variable, and so forth. The mean of our second variable or component is mu2 all the way to mu p, and that's the mean vector. Now, the sample mean vector is denoted by y bar and again the p minus one is not always provided when you write it but it's just here just to help illustrate that it's a vector of length p and it comprises of the mean of each variable in a vector and the mean of course is you add them up you divide by n add them up and you do that for each variable or each component now notice the one over n is is in each component so that can be multiplied out as a scalar because then it goes into each component um, the sum can be written as you know the addition of these observations you know each component wise well that is a matrix product so if you look at these this matrix times this one vector multiplied up then you get this sum and you do that for each row and you get the sum well this is generically you know so one over n this is the transpose of the data matrix so it's y transpose and this is j just a vector of ones now it can be shown that the sample mean vector is unbiased for the population mean vector and to see that you just you take the expected value into each component and the and then the sample means are unbiased for their variable and, you, and it creates a mean vector now the population covariance matrix denoted by capital sigma and it's a p by p matrix you know because there's p variables in our random variable y it can be denoted as the covariance of y so it's a vector or the variance of y and that's a vector both are okay and it consists of all the covariances of the of the variables so sigma 2 1 is the covariance between variable 2 and variable 1 now notice that on the diagonals it, the indexes are the same so sigma 1 1 means the covariance between variable 1 and variable 1 which is just the variance so some people will write the variances down the diagonal this you know the expression on the left is easier to write mathematically because then you don't have to have special conditions for the diagonal elements so again what i'm saying here is the diagonal elements or the variances the off diagonal elements or the covariances and this the you know the covariance matrix is symmetric right so the expected value of these two variables remember these are numbers so you could switch them and it's the same so it's the expected value of kj i mean you know um, the product of the differences so anyway the off diagonals are equal you know you know their respective components so it's symmetric now the population covariance matrix can be expressed like this so it's capital sigma is the ex expected value of the product of these two vectors and we derive this in the bivariate case so this is a, an analogous to that so if you want to see a little derivation of that go go to the bivariate covariance matrix but some people will write this as this last formula here so the expected value of y y transpose minus the mean mean transpose the mean vectors but to get there so you foil this out so y remember the, the transpose you take into both so it's y y transpose y mu transpose mu y transpose and then plus mu squared expected value goes into each component mu's are constant so their average value is just what it is remember the capital e the expected value is the average 
And so the average, remember y is the mean, the expected value of y is the mean, each of those. So notice we get some cancelization and we get this. Now the reason I show you this formula is if we were to add mu, mu, mu transpose to both sides and put it over here, then we have a formula for the expected value of this vector product, y, y transpose, which is equal to sigma plus mu, mu transpose. So the sample covariance matrix is a sample covariance matrix is the matrix of all sample variances and covariances. So it can be represented like this. Now notice down the diagonal, it's the same way. So S11 is the covariance between variable one and variable one, which is just the variance. So some will write S1 squared, S2 squared down the diagonal. Uh, the off diagonals are the sample covariances and they are symmetric. So SJK is equal to SKJ, so it's symmetric. Also, the sample covariance matrix is unbiased for the population covariance matrix. Now remember, S is a random variable, right? Because before the experiment starts, we don't know what the covariance matrix will be. So it's a random variable and it has a distribution and it has a mean. And that's what this is. The mean of our sample covariance matrix is the population covariance matrix. So it's an unbiased estimator for sigma. Now we can also obtain S from the data matrix and it is defined like this. Now we did a little bit differently for the bivariate case. In the bivariate case, we develop this this transpose um, matrix. Here, we're looking at this right one. So it's a little different, and I do it to, to kind of give you two perspectives how to think about it. So Y is their data matrix, so each column represents a variable, and then we're subtracting off the corresponding means. So since we're in column one, which is variable one, we subtract off the sample mean of variable one. Column two, we subtract off the sample mean for variable two and so forth. Then we, when we take this product and then the transpose, we get S, that's it. That's how you calculate it. Now, um, an equivalent form is this right here. S is equal to this quadratic form, right? Now you might think, wait, well, hey, there's a one over N minus one, that's not quadratic form. Well, you can take that constant and put it in this matrix and then it's exactly a quadratic form. But, and we derived this formula in the bivariate case. And remember this I minus J over N was an idempotent matrix. So then it can also be expressed in terms of the observation vectors. So if, you, if we look at this formula here, then if, if you do the mental gymnastics, you actually get this formula right here, right? And then people sometimes, this is the, the, a good definition formula for S, but often it's written in this last equation, which I'm going to call a working definition for S. They're equivalent, but this is easier to calculate. Now to get there, you would FOIL the, this expression. So remember the transpose goes into each of those. So it's YI times YI transpose, YI times, you know, the mean vector transpose and etc. Then you take the sum into each of these and this is the sum, this, you know, but notice on this last one, there's no index. So we're adding it to itself in time. So it's in times that the mean sample mean vector is constant. There's no index there. So it can be taken out of the sum on this one. You have to take it out of the back because it's, you know, it, it's the wide bar transpose, but this is the sum, the sum of the observation. So if we divide by n and multiply by n, which is multiplying by one, it doesn't change it. But then this is the sample mean vector. So you have minus n times y bar, y bar transpose. That cancels with this last one. And then these come down and that's it. Now to get this from this expression right here. So if we write multiply n, write distribute 
y transpose and then left distribute y. So y transpose y is actually this. It's the sum of the yi times yi transpose. That's it. Now the second piece here, the y transpose times the you know j over n, and then right multiply in y. You have to you have to note that j over n is an idempotent matrix. So then you create a second copy of it in here. And then this goes with this y, and then the second copy goes with y transposed. And then you can kind of rationalize out that it's this second piece right here. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.